everyone and welcome to my quick review of the new Lotus Emira. Some of you may have seen on the 6th of July 2021 the Emira revealed to the world on a live stream from Hethel. I must say I was quite impressed with the event and in true British summer weather it pissed down and then the sun came out, the English summer. It wasn't too glitzy or over the top like the Danny Baha launch in Paris in 2010 with so-called Friends of Lotus celebrities. The only celeb at this one was Jensen Button, who at least knows about cars and does love a Lotus and is working on a few projects with Lotus as well. Right, on to the Amira then, one of the most anticipated cars that Lotus has produced for an awfully long time. It's not due to go into production until early next year. Amira means commander or leader in some ancient languages and of course starts with an E, so that ticks that box. It started life as Project Gamma back in the days of John Mark Galleys and went through a few iterations from Gamma to Gamma 2, back to Gamma and so on. It wasn't an easy berth and finally ended up as a Type 131, then went on to be named Amira. Several powertrain options were looked at including Geely and Volvo and I said to Neil Turner at the time, what they need is an AMG engine. Shortly afterwards, we found out an AMG powertrain had been chosen. I was thinking more along the lines of the twin turbo V8, but I think that was a bit ambitious. And the i4 AMG from the A-Class Mercedes was chosen. I was tasked to start preparing training for the dealer techs globally in July 2019 and requested at least one VP car to prepare for this, which was agreed. Of course, this never happened for obvious reasons. If you know my story, shame, I was looking forward to that. So back to the engine choice, <coughs> excuse me. Now some may say a four cylinder is not enough, but this is the most powerful four cylinder in the world. And looking back, the Esprit Sport 300, that had one of the most powerful four cylinder engines in the world at the time. And that was a pretty impressive car. I believe the engine chosen is the M139 engine with a power output of between 382 and 416 horsepower with an eight speed double clutch transmission. Lotus saying it's press blurb, a four cylinder developed in conjunction with AMG and tuned to deliver a heart racing 360 horsepower. So why not the 416 version? I'm sure all will be revealed at a later date. Performance for the Emira, sorry, is quoted at 0-62 in less than four and a half seconds and a top speed of up to 180 mile an hour. A Mercedes A45 with a 415 option does 0-62 in 3.9 and a top speed limited to 155. The A45 weighs 1550 kilos, which is pretty good for an all steel four seat, four wheel drive car. The Amira's target weight, so say Lotus, is 1405 in its lightest form. So I'm not sure how a hatchback can outperform a sports car that is 145 kilograms lighter. We'll have to wait and see on that with the final production cars. The initial power option in the first edition model is, as Lotus say, powered by the much loved and Lotus home 3.5 litre V6 used in the Evora and Exige Toyota engine. Then. Transmission is either six-speed manual or automatic transmission carried over from the Evora. So that means the good old EA60 gearbox for the manual version, which I think is a bit disappointing if it is the EA60. Now, onto the look of the car. Personally, I think it is really good looking judging by the pictures. Of course, in the flesh, that can be different, but I reckon it will look even better. Russell Carr knows how to design a good looking car, that's for sure. So well done on that one, Russell. There are obviously a lot of styling cues from the Avaya. In fact, the Amira could be the Avaya's baby brother or sister, in my opinion. On having a closer look at the car, I spotted some other influences as well. Looking at the rear tailgate glass reminded me of the 1990 Esprit with the glazed tailgate. The Amira exhaust layout reminded me of the Series 2 release with the MG Rover engine. The rear lights looked familiar to me as well, and then I remembered they are similar to the Mercedes CLA that I used to have. Of course, all designers draw from other designs, but this is unmistakably 
a lotus of its time. So the exterior to me looks exceptionally good and on the road mixed with all the more mundane traffic it will stand out like a racehorse at a donkey farm. Right, let's have a look inside the car. This is where it is light years ahead of any Lotus made so far. The fit and finish going by the photos is top quality and I would suspect not made in house. With a larger budget, Lotus I would expect went to an external supplier of interiors. To me, it has a German look to its quality, which is no bad thing. Of course, the Amira now has access to a larger, high quality parts bin such as Volvo and it looks like the old full focus indicator and wiper stalks have been pensioned off as well as the full focus key and it's now keyless. The rear seats have disappeared because I suspect a lot of that space is now occupied by all the control units needed to facilitate the all new electronic architecture. Instruments are now all digital, including the screen stuck on the dash, which nearly all manufacturers have adopted now. I think this all started with the Mercedes A-Class in 2012. I seem to remember a lot of comments on this at the time. Looks like they've stuck an iPod on the dash. But of course, everyone soon followed. And now Lotus have joined the club with the Emira. Incidentally, Mercedes dropped the screen on the dash concept and went for a full width screen for all functions and I love that on my Mercedes the augmented reality sat nav was brilliant. Right back to the Amira it also has rain sensing wipers, powered seats, all LED exterior lights, adaptive cruise control, anti-collision system, fatigue alert, road sign information, vehicle speed limiter, lane departure warning, career cross traffic alert and so on. It also has a two windscreen wiper setup not seen on a Lotus since the M100 Elan and for the first time on a Lotus an electric handbrake so no handbrake turns for the Amira owners then all stuff that mainstream cars have had for the last five to ten years so it's all a bit mainstream now and that may upset the Lotus minimalist enthusiasts out there but I don't think Lotus are aiming the car at them this has got to sell in large numbers so it must have a wider appeal and compete with the competition with a comparable amount of kit. So, who do I think are the competition? The cars the Amira are up against at the £60,000 mark, in my opinion, are of course the Porsche with its Cayman 718 GTS. This has a 400 PS six cylinder, manual transmission, 0 to 60, about four and a half seconds, top speed 182 mile an hour. Weight 1405 kilos. Hmm, heard that weight somewhere before. Price around £65,000, depending on options, of course. It has a somewhat bland Teutonic interior, although it is of high quality, as you would expect. Another car is the Jaguar F Type R Dynamic. 300 PS, four cylinder engine, and an automatic transmission. 0 to 60 in 5.4 seconds, top speed limited to 155. Weighs in at 15.53 kilos. Priced around, depending on options, £64,000. Has a high quality, functional, well appointed interior. Now, the Audi TTS Coupe Vorsprung TFSI. 300 PS four cylinder, seven speed DCT. 0 to 60, four and a half seconds, top speed limited, 155. Weight, 1420 kilograms. Now this is priced at around £55,000. Obviously it gets much more expensive with more options. And it's a bit of a class leader on its interior. It's the one that everyone aims for. Now I thought I'd chuck this one in and I know it's based on a BMW. It's, it's the Toyota GR Supra. 340 PS inline six cylinder turbo with an eight speed auto. 0 to 60, 4.3 seconds and then limited top speed of 155. Weighs in at 1,500 kilos, priced at around 55,000 pound. Interior is clean, tidy and uncluttered, but then it's a Toyota, so that's what you expect. And finally, is a bit of a wild card, the Corvette C8 Stingray. 490 PS, mid-mounted V8 engine with an eight speed DCT, 0 to 60, three and a half seconds. Top speed, 200 mile an hour. Weight around 1527 kilos, which is not bad for an American car, and priced around 60,000 pounds. 
and it has a well-appointed Hollywood style interior. So that's a bit of competition for Lotus, which has always been there, but this time Lotus wants to take them head on with a product that does compare equally in many ways as far as quality, performance, specification and price. Obviously some variants of the Amira will be much more expensive and that will bring in other compet compet competitors into the frame like the Porsche 911. Something the Evora failed to do when you look at the volume sold by Lotus versus the competitors. Of course as well the volume of the Amira has to compensate for the sales loss now because of the demise of the Elise and Exceed because it's unlikely that anyone interested in those will choose an Amira. The Lotus marketing machine has been at full speed with all the usual stuff. All new is used yet again. I'm sure you remember my re remarks regarding the last all new sports car the Evora 400. So is the Amira all new? It depends on how you look at all new. Yes it is an all new design. Yes it is an all new interior. It has things in it that Lotus have not had before or any car like the Kef UniQ sound system, a British company famed for its high quality speakers. The tyres are new and bespoke bespoke for the Amira as developed by the ride and handling team led by Gavin Kershaw. Hydraulic power steering has been retained for a better feel over electric powered steering. The list goes on but although the tub is supposed to be all new I'll bet it has many elements of the Evora and if I was to have a good look under the skin there would be quite a few carryover parts engine and gearbox being just a couple of them. This is by no means a criticism. If you have parts that can cross over why not? They're proven, they're tested, they're durable and they're available. So to me the Amira is an evolution of the Evora. Now one of the dictionary definitions of evolution is the gradual development of something especially from a simple to a more complex form. Evolution has been rather good for humankind over the last few million years anyway so it's not a bad thing. And let's face it Lotus have done it before. The Lotus Eclat evolved into the Lotus XL. The Lotus Elise Series 2 was an evolution of the Lotus Elise Series 1. The Series 2 Elise also morphed into the VX220 which then morphed into the Europa and let's not forget the Tesla Roadster. The Amira is aimed at the Porsche without a doubt but also the other competitors mentioned because Lotus now has an offering that compares in respect of comfort quality and everyday usability. So if you've got around £60,000 burning a hole in your pocket you may have looked at those cars and the Evora may have popped up on your radar but after looking at it dismissed it because it was a bit too raw and lacked some of the creature comforts. Well now you'll look at the Amir and say yes I could definitely live with that every day and be happy. That's what Lotus are going for, mass appeal not just enthusiasts. I know the Elise and Exceed enthusiasts out there will think that Lotus are moving away from the lightweight simple cars but that is exactly what Colin Chapman did when he dropped the Elan and the Europas and introduced the Elites, the Eclats, the Excels and the Esprit. The Lotus Amira may well be close to the weight of the outgoing Evora but when you look at what's been packed into it I reckon they've done a bloody good job to keep it down to the claimed weight so well done there Lotus. So in summary, do I think Lotus have done a good job that would appeal to the mass market? Yes, I honestly do. Will it appeal to the Elise and Exige owners? Well, no, not all of them because you can't fiddle around with it and whack a load of aftermarket bits on it. But then again, how many people who buy a new Porsche or an Audi TT start doing that to them? Not many, I would reckon. Will it appeal to current Evora owners? Yes, it will some of them, but some may prefer the Evora they have for its more analog feel. Remember, this is just the first edition of the Amira, and what you've seen isn't even a production car. They're prototypes. Good prototypes, but not final production. So if the fit and finish on these is as good as it looks, the production cars should be even better. I have no doubt there will be different variants and a GT4 race car as time goes on. Which car would I choose out of all of these cars mentioned? 
Let me have a think. Well, unsurprisingly, the Amira. I know I'm a bit biased, but as a car nut and someone who's been in the motor trade for 50 years, the Amira just appeals to me more than all the others for its looks, the interior, and I know it will handle really well and it will put a smile on my face. I sincerely hope that it is a great success for the sake of all the people at Hethel and Lotus as a unique car maker. All I need now is an invitation for Matt Windle to go down to Ethel for a real close look at the car and the factory. But I shan't hold my breath for that while I'm waiting. So that's my take on the new Lotus Emira. So until the next time, take care, keep subscribing and from the Lotus Guru, so long.